the, the presentation and for its candor, um, a C plus. I, I think all of us would agree with that. Um, and I think that there is much that can be done on the government side and on the development partner side to get us up to that A plus where we are all committed to being. Um, I think you probably heard some gasps in the room uh, from some of the development partners in terms of the figures. And I think uh, that that is testament to uh, the following. Um, it reminds me of the, the story of you know, putting five blindfold men in a room and then trotting in an elephant and one of them grasps the trunk and thinks that he's got hold of a garden hose and one holds the leg and thinks he's got hold of something else. And so we're all looking at this rather large and complicated beast, the elephant, that is this partnership that we have together that goes in multiple directions. And each of us, I think, are only at the moment able to see part of it. And that leads to us arriving at some different places in terms of the analysis, and I'll come to that, but actually a surprising degree of convergence in some of the, the diagnostics and some of the recommendations. And to, to start at the end, what I would say is that this uh, points to the need to get this task force between government and partners up and running as soon as possible to bring these different worldviews and analyses together as soon as we can. Um, I have a very brief presentation that will take us through what we identified from the development partner side um, through some interviewing and some survey work as the sort of five main baskets of challenges that I think we feel we have. And there's, there's quite a degree of convergence uh, there. So let me go to the first of them. So we agree with you. I think that there is some inconsistency both on our side and, if I may, on, on government side in how we define. So um, some of the definitions that were used to draw up those numbers, are we talking about quote unquote on budget, are we talking about quote unquote off budget, uh, the different groupings, whether uh, actors are bilateral or multilateral, what constitutes a project, is it a loan, is it a grant, is it a multi-year, is it a single year, and so on and so forth. There's some inconsistency in the definitions, and then also in the requests and the requirements which lead to delays in signings of agreements. And I think you pointed to that uh, towards the end of your uh, presentation, PS. Um, uh, these were um, uh, conditions precedent to agreement, I think was how you put it. So I think there's a lot we can do there in terms of streamlining procedures, uh, standardizing templates, and so on as appropriate. The next, and I really want to lean into this one quite hard, um, uh, there are some practical, uh, and I emphasize that they are practical, not principled challenges for many development partners in the room in living up to the strictures of the Public Finance Management Act and some of the associated regulations that go with that. Why do I say practical, not principled? So we are all, as development partners, committed to full visibility and transparency of what we are doing, who we are working with, what we're trying to uh, accomplish for Kenya and with you, and the maximum possible alignment. Um, but um, what we, uh, we see in the development partner landscape is a real variety of different forms of engagement and, critically, scales of engagement. So the same kind of approvals procedure that work for a, forgive me, uh, Keith, uh, a 100 or $200 million loan don't work for a 500,000 project. Um, there I'm talking in dollars, but we can, we can make the same numbers. Um, and uh, so already anticipating the idea that every project would need cabinet, cabinet approval um, I can say from the perspective of the United Nations, where we have literally hundreds of projects, the cabinet would be doing nothing else. Um, so what we need is um, uh, different, different approval mechanisms for different scales and different forms of engagement. And that leads uh, on this point. Um, uh, there was a particular gasp from me uh, when the UN was listed with a 0% implementation rate. Um, in this very tent, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, with the Deputy President, we reported an implementation rate of 86%. And the discrepancy there, of course, is that the majority of the work that the United Nations does with the support of the partners in the hall is quote-unquote off budget. And I think the same, uh, David, where are you, for the United States, zero uh, percent. I don't think Congress would love it if you were at zero uh, percent. So we know you're not. 
um, why are we quote unquote off budget? I actually asked in our country team, one of our experts to give us a presentation just a couple of weeks ago on what it would take to move UNs, um, but if you're going to go through a 34-stage approval process for a project that is a pilot project at, you know, 100 million shillings in a couple of counties, it just doesn't make sense. So we have to find a way, and in short, um, the Public Finance Management Act doesn't work for the scale at which some of us are working, and I know that that's true of some of the bilaterals. Let me hasten. Uh, lengthy delays in processing invoices, disbursements, or related to taxation and exemptions. I think there's a lot of work that we can do here. Um, it is the case, for example, that for many of us, approvals for disbursement have to be signed off on by somebody at your level PS or above. And we know how overwhelmed you are and how often people like you are traveling. Um, but there is right now no de delegation of authority, and it seems to us that perhaps for smaller sums there could be a delegation of authority. Again, a kind of um, subsidiarity of approval. Um, but often contractually agreed to timelines are broken. Sometimes that's us. Sometimes, forgive me, that is you. And that creates unnecessary burdens. And as you pointed out, uh, PS, particularly for the loans, um, that means that government is continuing to pay administration fees while implementation is remaining stalled. That doesn't work for anybody. So are there some low-hanging fruit there um, around delegation of authority and otherwise? The question of counterpart funding, and again, PS, we converge with you here. Um, that often is, uh, is a cause for delay and unpredictability. If counterpart funding is expected either as um, the government's contribution to a loan agreement or to a grant agreement, we need to have much better prioritization with you and consultation with you beforehand. And we as partners share in that. But other times, and um, uh, your, your boss and mine, uh, Prof. Juguna, is not in the room yet, I think, but I remember him receiving me at six in the morning to unblock um, a small but significant grant agreement uh, between um, a bilateral partner and a UN entity and the Kenyan government. And uh, I was told, well, the reason it's blocked, Stephen, is that there's no provision made for the counterpart funding that the program expects. To which I said, yes, but the program doesn't expect any counterpart funding, CS. It's a misunderstanding. We had the letter of no objection within 35 minutes. So very often there can be this mistaken assumption that counterpart funding is needed when it isn't. So we have to get better at that. Final point. Um, so lack of visibility to and importance given to development partner support that is not in the form of direct budget support. A decade ago, a lot of us were doing direct budget support. These days, very few of us are. Um, and I think what we saw in the presentation uh, that you gave, which was excellent, but it means that the, the direct budget support and the on-budget work is much more visible to government than the stuff that is quote-unquote off-budget. We need to find a way to render that quote-unquote off-budget support more visible to government, more accountable to government, more transparent, and where it can be better aligned but in a way that doesn't hold things up. And um, as I've already said, uh, I think we collectively feel that the Public Finance Management Act isn't a supple enough tool uh, to deliver on that. So we need to find other ways to render that, that larger quantity of support. I was trying to do the numbers in my head, but I think it's at least as much again. I think it amounts collectively to about another $2 billion uh, per annum or, or something like 200 billion shillings. Please don't quote me on that because I'm doing it from memory, but it's about that order of magnitude. How do we render that visible to you, accountable to you, transparent to you? So, like you, um, some thoughts about a way forward. Um, we reaffirm our commitment to strengthen that visibility and that alignment. We want to work with government to do that. We want together better to seek the solutions that would help have to render visible that full totality of the support that is brought, including support that is not direct 
ultimately on the budget. Our discussions today were intended as a waypoint. Um, we are converging uh, what we see from the partner side and what government sees from its side. I think, therefore, the candor that we've had this morning, I hope, is a, is a very helpful step towards that. I think it's critical now that we do have that joint task force that can converge the two views, that can dig into the recommendations together, dig into the analysis together, come up with some recommendations to bring to the Development Partners Forum, inshallah, in September. Um, particularly, uh, what are the key blockages? I think we've both identified those. What are some low-hanging fruits? And what are some priorities, even though they're not very low-hanging? I don't think that the taxation exemption issue is a low-hanging fruit. It's a complicated one, but it is very important that we get it right uh, for, for all of the partners in the room. We need to then identify timelines, milestones, and responsible focal points on government side and the development partners side for the implementation of each recommendation. And then we need, and this is the crucial bit, that's what this development partnership forum is for, is to bring this issue back and for us to hold ourselves accountable to what we've agreed. Where are we on fixing uh, the visibility? Where are we on fixing uh, the implementation uh, pace? Where are we on um, uh, working out better ways to ensure that visibility, that alignment, that transparency, and that accountability that don't hold us back and hold us up. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Uh